Good morning, students. I am Dr. F. Andrews, Assistant Professor, PG Research Department of Commerce, St. Joseph College of Arts and Science, Autonomous, Kadalur. Today we are going to dissolution of firm, modes of dissolution and types of dissolution, entries and accounts required to be made on disposal of the asset of the firm and on payment of the liabilities. What is meant by dissolution? Dissolution of the firm means that the business of the firm is put on the end. Asset are disposed of, liabilities are paid off, and the accounts of all the partners are also settled. The Partnership Act 1932, Section 39 says the dissolution of partnership between all the partners of a firm is called the dissolution of a firm. Simply said, the firm discontinuation or closing down the firm permanently. Modes of dissolution There are essentially two modes of dissolution of the firm. First one, dissolution without the order of the court and dissolution by the order of the court. Dissolution without the order of the court. The firm is dissolved without the order of the court in any one of the following ways. Dissolution by agreement. The Indian Partnership Act 1932 the dis dissolution of a partnership firm if all the partners agree to dissolve it. A partnership firm can be dissolved by an agreement among all partners. In simple, the firm may be dissolved either with the consent of all partners in accordance with the contract between the partners. Compulsory dissolution The firm may be compulsorily dissolved under the following situation Insolvency of partner When all the partner of a firm are declared insolvent or all but one partner are insolvent then the firm is compulsorily dissolved The reason is simple that an insolvent person chooses to be a partner and there cannot be a partnership firm without at least two person. Illegal business When the business becomes unlawful on the happening or some event, the activities of the firm may become illegal under the changed circumstances. Trade against the public interest or unlawful activities under the new law. Trade with enemy country. A war erupts between the two countries. It will become a trading with an aligned enemy and further trading with the same parties will be illegal. Number of partners exceed 100. Section 464, the Company Act 2013 has been notified provides for maximum number of partners permissible 
for business firms at 100. Contingent liabilities. In case there is no agreement among the partners regarding certain contingencies, partnership firm will be dissolved and happening of any of the situation. The death of partner. A partnership firm is dissolved on the death of any one of partner. Expiry of the terms. The partner firm may be for a fixed period. On the expiry of that period, the firm will be dissolved. Dissolution by notice. A partnership is at will. It can be dissolved by any partner giving a notice to other partners. The notice for dissolution must be in writing. Dissolution will be effective from the date of notice. In case no date is mentioned in the notice, then it will be dissolved from the date of the receipt of notice. A notice once given cannot be withdrawn without the consent of all the partners. And resignation by a partner. If partner does not want to continue in the firm, his resignation from the concern will dissolve the partnership. And second modes, dissolution by the order of the court. So a partner can apply the to the court for dissolution of the firm on any of this grounds, the firm will dissolve. Insanity of a partner, the partner becomes of an unsound mind. If a partner goes insane, the partnership firm can be dissolved on the petition of other partner. The firm is not automatically dissolved on the insanity of a partner. Incapacity of a partner Where the partner is permanently incapacitated to perform his duties. The partners other than the suing partner becomes incapable of performing his duties then partnership can be dissolved. Misconduct by the partner. Where a partner is guilty of misconduct, the other person can move the court for dissolution of the firm. The misconduct of a partner brings bad name to the firm and it adversely affects the reputation of the concern. The misconduct can be in business or otherwise. If a partner is jailed for coming a theft, it will also affect the good name of the firm, though it has nothing to do with the business. Transfer of share The partner has transferred the whole of his interest in the firm. If a partner sells his share to the third party or transfers his share to another person permanently, other partners can move the court for dissolving the firm. A last one, regular losses. Where the business cannot be carried on except at a loss. When the firm cannot be carried on profitably, then the firm can be dissolved. If the firm dissolved, 
and how to account the settlement of the accounts. The rules regarding to settlement of the accounts and division of profit and loss after dissolution. Some important aspects of settlement of accounts. And section 48 to 55 lays down the rules and relating to settlement accounts and division of profits or loss after dissolution. So goodwill at the time of dissolution goodwill shall be included the asset and may be disposed of like other asset either separately or along with other firms properties so the goodwill does not have any special treatment is dissolution If it is appears in the books of, it has to be transferred into realization account. And how to settlement losses? Any loss including capital deficiencies, if any shall be paid first out of profit, next out of capital and lastly by the partners, individually in proportion of their share of profit or loss sharing ratio. Spouse loan. The loan from partner's spouse is to be treated as the normal creditor. So the basic aim of providing a loan in the name of the partner's spouse is to pay pass by pass the legal restriction on the loan from the partners to the firm. Due to employees, any amount due to employees like provident fund should be understood as a liability. The payable to the employees, it should be paid off. Specific fund uh, specific funds like uh, investment fluctuation fund. So, it must treated be credited to realization account along with the transfer of asset. Undistributed profits. So, general reserve, credit or debit balance in balance, profit and loss account, etc., should be directly transferred into capital account of partners in the profit sharing ratio. Unrecorded asset. Suppose the unrecorded assets are those assets which are completely written off may fit some cash at the time of dissolution. There is no need of bringing them into books and selling them afterwards. Undistributed Profit and Loss Asset taken over by creditors When creditor purchases some asset against amount due to them. Debit the creditor's account by passing the journal entries and credit the asset account. If the partners, the asset taken over is more than the amount due, the creditors will pay the excess amount to the firm. Realization expenses. Expenses of realization such as the commission paid to broker for the disposal of asset, registration, documentation charges, etc. are debited to the realization account and credited to cash account. Finally, the result of either profit or loss, realization will be transferred to the capital account of partners. 
uh, in their profit sharing ratio the only cash account and capital account will be left the overall effect of the above provisions may be summarized in simple terms third party claim partners loan account partners capital account thank you